Good morning, everyone. This is the Perio Teaching and Learning Call for December 15th, 2021, last one of this year. So welcome. Um, as I said, the link to the Etherpad to sign in is in the chat. Um, since one was not here, we they, I'll just mention the 21.2 maintenance release has been set loose in the world. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any other announcements. Doesn't sound like it. Okay, in that case, we can go ahead and... Um, take a look at um, a few JIRAs this morning. Let's see, I need to... Oh, I'm not used to doing this. Okay, so we'll just st start with this one. So this is something that Sean Foster had put up, um, noting that published assessments are shown as inactive if there are no active users in the course. And he's asking if that's actually intended functionality. I've also noticed kind of on a related view that if there is nobody um, what's the word I'm looking for? Eligible to take a particular assessment I believe it also shows as inactive then, too. Would that just be a, a programmatic function? In other words, it's, I mean, if there's a trigger on the back end that basically doesn't release something because there's no one to give it to, um, that doesn't, I mean, I guess I'm not exactly sure if I understand. Is it just a, a point of confusion? In other words, if there's not students in it, then it's like, why, I published these, why aren't they active? They should be active now. Um, well, there are any yeah. That, well, that's that's his question. That's kind of in his description. He says some teachers that are preparing courses before enrolling users are finding this functionality a bit strange. Uh, we actually run into the same issue when we actually do roster updates. If we do roster updates on courses that have actually finished, it passes data back into our student information system and then marks those students as gone. And so it pulls them out of their Sakai course sites. Um, and so um, that is a little bit of an issue for us, but we've approached it sort of in the same way. We just, we, we PR the thing. So, but anybody else got comments? I mean, I've, I have noticed that in, in the past that, you know, if there's nobody eligible to take, um, to take an assessment that it's listed as inactive. And that is a little bit disconcerting because it makes you think, well, wait, you know, was it active when it was, you know, even if it's still in the availability period, that can be a little bit confusing that it's showing as inactive. Would it be appropriate for us to somehow suggest that within the interface, there's some sort of note that says courses with no users will show items as inactive or something, something that's wordsmithed well and short and then placed somewhere on the page? I mean, it's going to clutter the page a bit, but... Um, either that or it, it needs to be changed so it actually is listed as active. I think that would be the other option rather than putting a message. Anybody else have an opinion? 
my opinion is just put something on the page because I think programmatically it's easier. Um, but I don't know exactly how hard it would be on the back end to actually modify the function of saying, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that would be a developer question. I just think throwing something on the page is easier to do because it's just a matter of modifying the HTML on the page to indicate that. Although I don't know where it would actually go. I'm trying to pull up a testing quizzes area now to try and get to the place where we would actually see something like that. Yeah, there's nothing else that's on the page that as far as I can see in 21 that actually indicates anything else other than the status as published inactive, published active, draft, or whatever the other one is. Yeah, there's nothing else on the page that actually makes that indicative anywhere. Now, I guess the other the other potential way to do this is to throw that sort of thing in the documentation so that the the description of each of those is such that if there are no students in the course, if there are no active participants in the course, then the item will show as inactive because there's nobody to take it. Yeah, but who reads the documentation? Only when they get frustrated enough to go to it. Yeah, but, but if they're frustrated enough to go to it and then get that as an answer, you know, it could be um, off putting because it, it is a confusing message to an instructor who happens to be in a course that has no students. Mm -hmm. It's published, it's active, it's just nobody can submit to it, but that doesn't change the assignment status. So would the best option, the best design option be that we change it so that it actually says active, even though there aren't students to take it? That would be my inclination, I think. Because the... Because I think that's more consistent with what's actually the the actual status of the assessment itself rather than the people the users so it really ought to be reflecting the status of the assessment itself if that makes sense yeah no, that, that actually does make sense i think faculty make the equivalent that in their minds if something is in a certain frame in a certain set of dates then it should be active and I'm making, you know, I make the equivalence that if it's in that sort of frame date, then it should be active. I'm not making the correlation that if there aren't students, it's not active. Mm -hmm. Christina said in the chat, active, available now. She said uh, something about a more status. Christina says, I'd vote for yeah. more status pending, not open yet, closed, available window passed. That's getting more complicated. Um, not that I'm necessarily against that, but it's that would be another i think thing entirely to um change to, to actually um add in new status labels as opposed to just um changing how the current status label um is displayed depending on conditions <laughs> And there's something in the comments about what I just said. Ha. Um. Um, yes, Adam, you are correct. Those are the current um, possible um, labels. Okay, so we seem to be kind of coming to a consensus that um, the label should reflect status.
I think we're probably in agreement that the status yeah. represent the status of the assessment itself, regardless of right. the course. Yep, I think so too. It has the I think potential that's... of being submitted to even mm -hmm. if there are no students in the course. Yeah. Or if all the students have already taken it. Because I think it goes inactive then too. I'd have to double check that. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Let's see. What's this one? Sorry, I'm previewing these before I put them up. Are we documenting that one at all? Um, In the JIRA or? I've been having difficulties getting logged into Confluence, so I'm not sure if I actually can comment in the JIRAs at the moment. I'm in the JIRA I'm making... at the moment, so I can. Oh, okay. If you can, then please do. Okay. Um, so note that it was discussed in the teaching and learning call. Um, I don't know if there's a tag that can that I think you can change to that we've reviewed it, I believe. Um, but I haven't played with the new system enough to know what I, I couldn't get logged in to Confluence this morning. My, and I tried requesting a password change and that didn't come through. So I don't know what the heck's going on with that. So I'm kind of at a loss at the moment. I'm actually in it currently and there is a label for TL reviewed, which I add added. But uh, I'm sorry, who was commenting a moment ago? I, I'll leave it to you. To, was it you, Dave? I'll yeah, it, it was I'll Dave. Comment. I'll just add the comment. If you got the tag on there, that's good. Yeah, I see it. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, this next one is from Tiffany, who's not here, but so 46347, changing the grading type of an assignment after grading grades are incorrect. Um, sorry, I'm kind of trying to read through these comments. This one seems like it's kind of complex. Yeah, it does. And I'm not sure exactly what um, the request is for us to review. It almost looks like it's changed since it was first put in. 
Um, grade value is wiped and smashed. So initially, she says the grades are incorrect, but then in her, oh, that's Paul. Um, maybe that is his local. Hmm. I'm not sure where Paul is from, no, I don't um, who's been commenting, um, but it looks like they've changed it so that the grade value is just wiped. Oh yeah, in his implementation. Hmm. Yeah, they've got an implemented local solution. That's how they address it, I guess. Right. And I, I seem to remember we may have run into something similar at our institution as well when somebody changed from letter grade to points and it did some form of multiplication in order to modify the existing grades and convert them. Yeah, what he notes, what he notes in a comment further down is that it basically kind of removes the decimal point. And so that makes it appear like things are being um, multiplied by 100. Um, that was part of the, the issue that Tiffany first noted. Um, so I guess the question is, do we um, recommend the, the idea that, OK, if you change the grading type, then it should just completely wipe any existing grades? If we take that behavior, we should be sure to notify the user that taking the action is going to drop data on the floor because. Mm -hmm. Right. Which kind of goes along with Tiffany's comment about the, the messaging that's there already. Mm -hmm. And she opened a different Jira for that. Well, it's more of an accessibility thing, I guess. I would think that changing the grading type should result in everything being marked as ungraded, but a warning to pop up first. Um, I don't know how many mm -hmm. of you guys play with rubrics, yeah. but in the newer versions of Sakai, if you um, have it yeah. set that the rubric is set to adjust individual student grades and you go in and you uncheck that, it immediately pops up with a warning you know, that this is going to result in some of that being lost. Right. And I would put the same thing here where they either have to confirm or cancel. But it should definitely give a warning. Hey, are you, sh this is going to drop all those, gr any grades you already have. Are you sure you really want to do that? Okay, now what's going on? <sighs> okay, now Etherpad is acting funky. Today is not my technology day, apparently. So do we have consensus around how we think this should actually be resolved, whether or not it should go through and follow the line of thinking that Tiffany and, and Paul have put forward that we should drop the grade, but if the drop if the grade's gonna be dropped, then there should be a some sort of messaging that actually indicates that that's the case. Yes. I think so.
I pasted in chat. Etherpad looks to have gone down. Yeah. Then it's not just me. Yay. I still have Etherpad up. I still have Etherpad up so I can read off the SAC numbers if that's what we want to do next. But yeah, I, I can still read it. Oh, okay. Um, but it won't let me get back in and make any edits. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to have to make notes somewhere else. Oh, good grief. Okay. Oh, oh. And now it's the log four J vulnerability. I'm blaming everything on that. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um, and now I've just totally lost my connection to the Etherpad, so now I can't see the Jira's. I, so whoever just volunteered to paste another to list the next Jira, fire away, because I can't see him anymore. I, think, I broke it. It's, hang on a second. I got to check my numbers here. It's 41171. Hang on. I'll, I'll paste it in here in a second. Got it. Great. Thanks. Assignment should react to group changes. Oh. Oh, so this is the idea. I'm assuming this is the idea that if someone makes changes in the group settings. Oh. So someone uh, yeah, I'm not to another. More of the recent comments are just about getting over to, into the, the new platform. Move an instructor. Tiffany's comment from December 2nd, has Kevin Carruth from UVA already done work on this at UVA? And they're looking to contribute back to... Ooh, good point. I'm not sure. I We might want to just wait on this one. I think we should wait on this one. Yeah, let's, let's kind of skip over this one for the moment and go on to the next one, because this has been an ongoing issue for a while. Well, and I remember, and I'm not quite sure what the status is here. I remember when group assignments first came into being, a question was if a student moved from a group that had completed an assignment to a group that hadn't completed the assignment, had they completed it or not? So mm -hmm. it gets sticky. It does get yeah. Sticky. I think there's some spaces think in which edge cases cannot be completely resolved in every case. <laughs> right. So let's let's punt on this one okay. and move on to something that we can hopefully can conclude. I don't think I want to get into that one without Tiffany's input. So um, the next Jira one is number? go ahead. What's the next Jira number? Uh, it's I've got it in the tech in the chat. It's uh, forty five six ninety three. Bulk grading of unsubmitted and ungraded assignments. So. Um, Who's Victor us reported this one? I don't know. Okay. 
It looks like there has been a solution for this, but it wasn't implemented the way people thought it should. Um, so it looks like the 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 question now seems to be regarding um, whether things should be um, selected by default. Um, Marty and I would agree suggest, with that. Yeah, Marty seems to suggest we, they should be unchecked by default. And I agree. That's what Tiffany also said. So are we suggesting then that we should, re I assume, revert back to the way it used to be, or at least suggest that the checkboxes be? Well, I don't think we want to revert. I think we want to. Because this is actually a fix for 22. It's not currently, it's not in yet. It's just a question of um, Yeah. Okay. Um, mark it. Thank you. That was an easy one. What do we have next? Uh, next one is going to be four, five, seven, seven, nine. Hitting minimum point value, negative marking on grading pages. Okay, I think this was also a Tiffany. Um, This is in, oh, this is in San Miguel, okay. Yep. I actually put this request in in response to a related one that Tiffany put in. On the grading page. So like when you're grading a test, grading by question or grading by student, Okay. Some sort of obvious indicator to the instructor um, why there's a negative score in here, why there's a minimum score. Ah, okay. So an instructor who, say, maybe is not the one who created this test, but copied it from another class. Okay. Um, they Or they set it by default, not realizing what that checkbox was or not realizing that that field was the subtract points, not assign points. Yep, I've had people run afoul of that one. So just some some sort of explanation that they can look and go, oh, I see what I did wrong. So any suggestion about how we would actually throw that in there to give someone guidance? Like currently when you're in there, uh, if you have, I don't know what it looks like when there's minimum points or negative points uh, in the question set. Like, but standard questions will always have like one point uh, off to the right of the question. And the number of points you can enter for that, I assume we would want to put that somewhere near those areas. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Possibly, 
um, <laughs> like to well, the, well, to the left ahead. or to the right of, you know, blank. What, what I guess it depends on grading by question or grading by student. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was very about to say. Very different UIs. For grading by student, I could see that indication being to the left of the point field. So question one of five number of points earned slash maximum points, and then the additional indicator of negative marking, extra credit, um, minimum point value, things like that. And when grading by question, maybe that can be um, at the top where it's got the number of maximum number of points and this question type, you know, part one, question one, single correct, two points. But that's just my thoughts. Yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to think what it looks like as it is now. Is there a way you can bring up? I mean, I've got one on my, but I don't have one that's an, I don't have one that's set as a minimum point value. I could create one real fast, but it would, I don't know if someone had one off there. Actually, I don't think I've ever asked, we messed with a single, uh, a minimum point value question. Well, it's a newer feature, if I recall correctly. See, I'm trying to think if I have one that's. No, I didn't do it. Is it dependent? Oh, wait. Is it dependent upon the question type? No, it's not. Nope. You can display the point value. Hmm. That's not what I meant to do. Um, I can do points deducted for an incorrect answer. Edit. edit. I have one. Do you have one? Yeah, I do have one. Um, I just need to publish it. So the consensus would be that this would be a good idea to actually go through and uh, let the instructor know or whoever the score is. It's just a matter of deciding where that is and what it says. Okay, so if we, oh, but nobody's taken it. Oh, damn it. I was going to say. <laughs> Give me just one second. That I can fix pretty quickly. Slash X login.
This is the dramatic pause, right? Yeah, something like that. Of course, I have to change the due date. Come on. Oops, didn't finish. Come on, where's my submission? I think the next Jira is actually very related. All right, I apologize. I don't know why my submission isn't showing up now. It's all right. <sighs> the next Jira on the Ethernet pad list, you mean? Uh, yes, it's very similar or very or it's related. It's uh, 45779. That's the one we're looking at now. Oh, that's the one we're looking at now. I just got the number wrong. There it is, finally showed up. Okay, so this question two has a minimum score set of one point out of three just for answering the question. So Christina, you were suggesting to the left. To I'm the wondering right, if it should, the other left. oh, okay, to the, ah, uh, okay. Cause I was just thinking it should be to the right that, that it should then say something like, um, ne minimum negative, point point. negative points, X number, minimum point value, X number, even if, if those are enabled. Yeah. Yeah. Or even, you know, extra putting in parentheses, extra credit, if it's an extra credit item, but something mm -hmm. on this page that explains how these numbers are affecting the grading. Where did this one come from when the student got it wrong? Right. Because I know uh, with us, we have our master templates that are created by our lead instructors and mm -hmm. adjunct instructors will just copy the content from those. So we end up with adjuncts sure. who did not create the test. They do not know what those question settings are. Right. But they're administering the test and grading the test and where is this number coming from? Right. Yeah, I agree that, that some indicators should be present. So if we 
grade by question. Okay, we go to question two. So again, it should it should say right here a single correct three points. Then after that, it should indicate extra credit minimum point value negative marking. It looks like there's some context for this in multiple choice and single correct question types in the per student view. I assume we would do something similar in the question view. Right, we're looking at the question view now. And there's the line right here where it says single correct three points. Then after that, it should should indicate if there's minimum negative or extra credit applied to, to this particular question. That's weird. It says minimum point two up here. Where? Oh, Where it's, uh, up at the very t yeah, except it's one. It's not two. That's odd. It does say that, doesn't it? Could the minimum, you know the minimum. You know the minimum points were set to one. I think they were. Yeah. Looks like it's the same on this one as well. Minimum point is set to one. But it says minimum point two up here. That's odd. Is that the test name? Oh, shoot. Yes, it is. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Because I've just pulled it up on a test I did, and it's saying test one right there. It's like, wait, that's the test now. <sighs> Sorry. All right, good. <sighs> okay. Okay, so we're suggesting that we're suggesting that in the question view that we put to the right. Um, right. Uh, okay. Yeah. After it says three point zero points, it should then have an indicator of. Minimum points, negative points, and or extra credit. So we would say the same thing about the student view. Um, oh, in other words, what the students should see. Uh, I don't, I wasn't discussing. Or no. do you mean what, grading no, by student? Grading by student, that's what I meant. Okay. We, we can handle that. Yes. Somewhere else. <laughs> that's a whole nother can of worms. Grading by student would have that indicated. I guess right to just I guess to the right of the, the point valuation. Yeah, same thing. What? Oh, 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 
<laughs> Dave, that last link you you posted isn't working. Oh, it's uh, you can get to it from the next year, which is this one right here, forty five nine one two. I think that's forty. That's right. Display minimum. On the questions editing screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is to, I think she's indicating on the editing screen. That it should be indicated here as well. Yes. This was the request of Tiffany's that inspired mine. Okay. So agreed. It should be indicated here as well. <laughs> I saw that ticket. It's like, so why don't have it? Why don't I have it on the grading screen too? Fair enough. So they've got a yeah, great idea. I'm trying to shot. catch up on this. Okay. So as far as the Forty-five nine one two is concerned. We would concur. Yes. So yeah, she. So there's a. Minimum point value down at the bottom, it just says, okay, 10 points, minimum point value, two points. And then that top question has the negative marking. Student negative marking. Yeah. Student receives negative 10 points for an incorrect answer. Right. So this provides sort of a model for them. Well, it actually looks like UVA has a local patch for this one. But yes, I, I think we're in consensus that these are both good um, indicators. Any other comments on those two? All right. Well, our time is almost up. So I think we'll stop there. Um, next meeting is scheduled for, I looked earlier, what is it? January 5th. Um, we do not have anything on the schedule as of yet. Um, so if anybody has any suggestions, feel free to pass them along to myself or Wilma. Um, but other than that, um, I hope everybody has a 
good rest of the year 2021 and we'll see you on the other side hope everybody has a good holiday and a nice break happy and all that other good stuff happy new year to everyone happy new year and with that i will stop the recording have a great day